seventy. I was at the age where most men would be retired, but I felt I was just getting started. The American New Wave was cresting, and I was going to ride that son of a bitch to shore. Now, the downside of taking the job was that Dennis was going to cut the film not in Los Angeles, but in his recently purchased estate in Taos, New Mexico, which is a lovely community if you like rattlesnakes, turquoise, and dry heat. To make things even more interesting, when myself and members of the editorial team arrived, Dennis welcomed us by firing an 8K47 into the air and then offering us tabs of peyote. That's when I knew this was not going to be a typical job. Now don't get me wrong, I've been around the block a few times. I've taken my share of illicit substances. Hell, one time when I was younger, I once spent four days in an opium den with Lillian Gish. It would have been longer, but D.W. Griffith sent the Pinkertons to roust us. And let me tell you something, friends, nothing will sober you up from an opium stupor faster than a rifle butt to the solar plexus. But there are people who can handle the stuff and those who can't. And Dennis was under the mistaken impression that he was the former. Hide the cocaine was the post crew's favorite game, and it drove Dennis crazy. To the point that one night I awoke to discover him standing over my bed, screaming at me, demanding to know where the cocaine was. And to make matters worse, he was completely naked, save for his hat and a motion picture projection reel that somehow he was wearing as a cock ring. Well, needless to say, this scared the bejesus out of me. And before I was even fully awake, I had bolted from the estate and ran five miles down the road. It was the most terrifying image I have ever seen in my entire life. Second only to the time when I was working the mailroom at MGM, and I walked into an executive's office to discover him fornicating with a glazed ham he had dressed as Shirley Temple. That is an image... I would gladly have flinched from my brain, even if it meant losing the memory of my mother's laughter. Well, the next morning, Dennis found me walking towards the border, and he apologized. And then he drove me back into town, and then he took the entire team out to a local diner for a good solid breakfast of steak and eggs. And let me tell you something, folks, that was the best meal I've ever had in my entire life. And that's pretty much how it went for the rest of the post. A couple of weeks would go by, Dennis would have a freak out, he'd apologize, and then take us all out for steak and eggs. It got to the point that we would almost look forward to Dennis having a fit because that meant we could go out for breakfast the next day. Now you say to yourself, well, you could have breakfast there anytime you wanted. You're close by. And this is true. But somehow, only doing it on days when Dennis went coo coo crazy made it a kind of special event, like Christmas with your drunk, violent uncle who still had his father's service revolver from the Civil War and would... You know what? That's another story for another day. Finally, we locked the picture and we showed it to the executives at Universal. And the reactions were, to say the least, muted. And when I say muted, I mean they all walked out of the screening room looking like they'd been hit across the head with a sock full of quarters. One of the producers at Universal, Jennings Lang, later told me that that screening had been one of the most painful experiences of his entire life. And this was a man who had been shot in the crotch by Walter Wagner for screwing Wagner's wife. So, you know, do the math on that one. Now, I did not see this for myself, but I later heard that Lou Wasserman was so upset that he chased after Dennis with a tack hammer. That's how bad the screening went. But Universal releases the film anyway, dies on the vine, Dennis spends the next decade wandering the wilderness, 
and I moved on to help Raffleson with uh, King of Marvin Gardens, which, believe me, is a whole other story for another time. And the next time I saw Dennis Hopper, things blew up. Literally.